one moment while I sync both cameras. Almost sunk up together. Do you one moment? That's all I need. Just one moment. One moment. And there we are. Greetings, unsettled souls. <laughs> Welcome to the correct views. Sam I beat the Angie during political commentary. HDAF up there. Live stream here. And I don't know how long it's going to go before the computer tends to cut off on me here because my computer is really, I think, going on the fritz and I don't want to admit it. So I'm going to get right into the show while I can. How about that? Uh, listen to this. Get used to it. China says as it flies bombers near Japan. Now, the, the problem I, I, I'm seeing here beyond the obvious is what is with China wanting war with everybody? Like, I know there's a lot of the whole blame America crowd. Okay, fine. Let's factor America out of this. China has not been able to get along with any Asian country whatsoever. They have started building artificial islands that have shown tendencies to be hostile in waters where they are wanting people to come and actually do business with them. They want people to trade with them. They want people to interact with them, and yet they're fighting with everyone in, in the entire Orient. And it's a very, it's a very much a war footing, I would say, and uh, I'm going to see what you guys think. Listen, China told Japan on Friday to get used to it after it flew six warplanes over the uh, Miyako Strait between two southern Japanese islands in a military exercise. Japan's defense ministry issued a statement late on Thursday in describing the flyover f by, the inf by the formation excuse me, of Huan H-6 bombers earlier on the day as unusual, while noting that there had been no violation of Japanese airspace. The Chinese Navy and Air Force have in recent months, it said, carried out a series of exercises in the Western Pacific. As they hone their ability to operate far from their home shores, the Chinese Defense Ministry said that it's legal and proper. Well, it might be legal. I don't know if it's very proper. For its military aircraft to operate in the airspace, and that it would continue to organize regular training exercises according to mission requirements. Now, let me let you in on a, a little secret here. A little bit of a hypocrisy, which I think a lot of you will enjoy. China is telling Japan and anybody doing business with them, of course, that they are jeopardizing the entire commerce state, if not uh, threatening a hot war with, that you're just going to have to get used to the fact that we're doing this. However, China is furious that technology, the THAAD technology, can be used to spy on China, they claim, by being in South Korea and keeping the South Korean people safe from the mad cheese eater up north. So it's okay when they spy, but it's not okay when anybody else spies. China is an extremely yeah, hypocritical country, to say the least. Um, the relevant side should not make us fuss about nothing over Inter, inter, or over-interpret. It will be fine once they get used to it, the ministry said in a statement. Well, I think maybe Japan should do it to China then and tell them to get used to it. I'm sure that would go over remarkably well. The Miyako Strait is between Japan Islands and Miyako and Okinawa to the northeast of the self-ruled Taiwan, which China claims as its own, and it is not. Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense said on Thursday that the bombers flew just outside their air defense identification zone and then it closely followed their movements. That's not a good sign, friends. That's not a good sign at all. And we're going to move into another one. This is also from Reuters. That is also not good. Uh, North Korea, the mad fat cheese eater, may have more nuclear bomb material than thought. Uh, this is according to the U.S. think tank. And there's a picture right there. Um, you can see clearly. Now, I don't know how many of you know this or not, but occasionally, especially when I'm writing for Teddy Stick, I get people that will sometimes leave a comment that says, don't you think America should leave well enough alone? Hear me out on this. 
I don't have a problem with North Korea being different. I have a problem with them threatening America. America has not threatened North Korea. North Korea has threatened America and everyone else. I have a problem with them having prisons that make the concentration camps of World War II look like they're back in vogue. Um, again, I don't think we need to go tromping into North Korea to get into some kind of a war. But I think for us to sit here and openly say that America is the aggressor here or somehow causing this is ridiculous. The, the country has gloated about being able to hit Alaska and Hawaii and quite possibly the West Coast, at least within the next couple of years, with nuclear weapons. And they're bragging about it, like it's something that they openly want to do. Okay, there are other nuclear nations. India is a nuclear nation. You don't hear them talking about how much they want to blow up America, do you? Thermal images of North Korea's uh, main nuclear site show Pyongyang may have uh, reprocessed more plutonium than previously thought that can be used to enlarge its nuclear weapons stockpile, a U.S. think tank said on Friday. The analysis by the 38 North, which is a Washington-based North Korean monitoring project, was based on satellite images of the radiochemical laboratory at the Yongbron nuclear power nuclear plant, excuse me, from September until the end of June. And then some mid rising international concerns, of course, over their program. So for those of you that maybe are not always with me on the, the massive Fukushima update, which you should go look it up. Let me real quickly here um, go into exactly what it is that we're talking about. North Korea is messing with plutonium. Plutonium has a half-life of millions of years. Now, they can hardly get a firecracker to work. There are people listening to Michael Jackson cassettes as if they are new. No, I'm not kidding. Now, let me ask you something. Do you think they're handling this plutonium responsibly? Or do you think it's leaching all over the place into the environment? Now, we know it's not horrible, or it would show up from imaging. But you can do uh, irreversible damage in terms of cancers and lung diseases and all the things that can... Look up plutonium poisoning, for crying out loud. Look up Belarus. Look up birth defects in Belarus. I always say, don't do it while you're eating. You might not like what you see. Well, this is the fuel compound that we are talking about here with the irresponsible North Korean. The think tank said the, the images of the uranium enrichment facility in Yongbin could also indicate operations of centrifuges that could be used to increase North Korea's stock of enriched uranium and other nuclear bomb fuel. There were, no, there were signs, too, that at least short-term activity at North Korea's experimental light water reactor that could cause concern, the 38 North said. Uh, the images of the radiochemistry laboratory showed that there had been at least two reprocessing cycles not previously known aimed at producing an undetermined amount of plutonium that can further increase North Korea's nuclear weapons stockpile, something that would worry U.S. officials who see Pyongyang as the world's top security threat. And there you can see the images of it. Um, here's, here's something to, 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 to mull over. That's the word of the day, mall. Go ahead and type it in the comment line, I'll send you something free. I do. Um, here's something for you to mull over. They were saying that North Korea, they, they, they didn't have uh, the technology to get to Alaska. They didn't have the technology to build a nuclear weapon. They didn't have the technology to handle um, re-entry. Well, it looks to me that they do. And now we didn't think they had the fuel. You know, maybe they're a whole lot further along than we think they happen to be. Just because their propaganda is 90% lies doesn't mean that all of it is. It is said that the thermal patterns on the plant's isotope tritium production facility suggested that it was not operational and was therefore not producing tritium, an essential isotope used to bolster yield and hydrogen weapons. It's also almost impossible to get tritium out of water. It will create lasting health damages forever if tritium gets into the water table. North Korean manufactures atomic bombs using uranium and plutonium and have tested five nuclear bombs. Officials and experts say it could test a sixth at any time, despite U.S.-led international efforts to curb the program. 
and it goes on to talk about where they can hit and the damage they can do. Now, one of the things that people tend to forget about here isn't just the damage that they can do by hitting a country with a nuclear weapon. Some people have suggested that you could kill as many as 90% of the U.S. population if you could take out an EMP blast during winter due to starvation because things would not grow and due to the EMP blast pretty much destroying technology and sending us back into the Dark Ages. Now, do I think that 90% of the population of the United States is going to die due to North Korea? No, not really. But even if it's a third that, 30% of the population, think about the elderly, the people that need their medicine, diabetics, kidney dialysis patients. Yeah, like I could see that happening. And uh, particularly if it caused a meltdown or two from nuclear power plants in North America, then all bets are off. It could be an extinction event. So they're nothing to play with, friends. Mull that over. All right, friends, this is brought to you right here by our friends at... Uh, the Seacrest Motel, where I'm going to be staying with Christelle tomorrow. Cedar Point, as long as it doesn't rain. So, Seacrest Motel, I will see you there. Groundbreaking study shows cannabis can help stop HIV from becoming AIDS. Now, I do want to caution, I hate when people say that marijuana cures everything, but I will say this, it has been found to do a lot of good particularly with epilepsy, and it's done a lot to, uh, for wasting and people that are not hungry and to help them eat. It's, uh, we all know that a hemp oil, or hemp oil girl had her brain cancer all but halted with it. Well, let's take a look at this. With so many studies coming out in the numerous ways that medical cannabis can treat health ailments, some of us may have been slightly numb to the wonders being revealed about this beneficial plant. But the new study published in the Journal of Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndromes, that's JADES, might change that. Researchers have found that THC, tetracannabinol, the main psychoactive ingredient in cannabis, can help prevent HIV from becoming AIDS. And here's our piece of the abstract. Um, if I read it to you, you won't listen to it, so look at it there on the screen. It breaks it down in scientific terms for you. Uh, here's a piece of it. Patients with HIV in the United States routinely use cannabinoid-based therapies to combat the side effects of HIV infection and antiviral therapy. However, cannabinoids, including tetracannabinol, are well-characterized immunosuppressants. Here we report that THC suppressed secretion of IFNA by PDC from both healthy HIV plus donors through a mechanism involving impaired photophallation and interin regulatory factor 7. In other words, it's changing the body's ability to allow the HIV virus to become AIDS, to, to break it down as best I can for you. Much of that is Greek to those who are not in the medical field, but the results suggest something stunning. HIV patients, maybe they'll do a better job than I did, taking cannabis have likely helped prevent their condition from turning into full-blown AIDS. This will open the door for medical cannabis to be used as a dual purpose for treating side effects and preventing the progress of the disease. According to H HIV Gov, more than 1.1 million people in the U.S. are living with HIV and one in seven of them don't know it. Um, although HIV and AIDS are declining, they remain a significant problem. Yes, we know this. So we're very, very happy to report you know, a little bit of good news, especially after the rather morbid tale that we had uh, starting off the show. I have two stories left for you. I want to remind you that you can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com. Every penny that you give to me goes towards a better show. It goes to the lights. It goes to all of this. So, friends, please think about supporting the show, the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. Branton.com. I don't think we've ever had them on here before. Brandon Harold, welcome aboard. Lifeguard tried to chase a shark away from a nude beach that made it attack instead. Now, what is it with sharks? We've had, like, nothing but shark stories, and everybody keeps commenting and saying they like them. We had the porn star that was attacked by the shark during an underwater, ooh yeah, scene. We had a shark attack uh, another uh, actor and take a piece of his leg off. Which we have sharks that now are preventing cancer. I wrote about that with Teddy Stick. Uh, they were trying to figure out if there's a longevity gene 
in the Greenland shark because it can live 400 years old. They found one that was born in 1795, and they were studying it. They didn't kill it. They just took a piece of its fin away. It'll grow back. Well, listen to this. Something rare happened. Maybe not. Something rare, they claim, happened this weekend in a Hellover Beach. So rare that it's the only occurred 15 times in recorded history in Miami-Dade coastal waters where a shark bit a swimmer. And, though nobody seems to be counting, it also appears to be the first recorded shark attack on a nude beach in South Florida. Elvin Lanza, 44, was taken to Aventura Hospital for surgery Sunday after nasty bites to both legs and, his ex and he's expected to recover. The attack by the shark, identified as a bull by some observers, but impossible to concern without it, without it to confirm without examining the bite marks, might have been provoked in part by a lifeguard trailing the meandering shark on the water bike while trying to warn bathers, but one of the foremost shark authorities have said the animal was being harassed, not necessarily intentionally, but trying to be herded out of the sea. This is from George Burgess. He's the director of Florida Natural Museum's History International Shark Attack File. An animal being cornered, it will lash out. It's a potential contributing factor that should be addressed. Well, they weren't cornered. They had the whole damn ocean to go to. They just wanted them to go away from the swimmers. I don't think this expert's all that genius here, because if you leave the shark in the water without trying to get him away, then he's just going to eat the swimmers anyway. So, I mean, I don't know if I trust this expert all that much, but we will go with it. All of the naked bodies in the water, on the other hand, probably played no role, he said. Yeah, I bet. Sharks can contrast well and are attracted to it. Contrasts like those between the sun-kissed and paler parts of the person's body, which is why experts recommend wearing more neutral-colored bathing suits to reduce the chances of being attacked. But sharks are also attracted to flashes and splashes. So, in other words, they had no choice but to chase him away. However... Video footage shows a Sunny Isles lifeguard puttering around on a water bike near the shark, estimated to be five to six feet long, while surrounding swimmers began making for shore. The water bike had been trailing the shark down the beach, according to Rob Boity, who was sunbathing with a friend near the lifeguard stand. He said he overheard them say, shark, the lifeguards, and then he heard the lifeguard blowing the whistle. Well, I guess you can just let the shark meander around and take off someone's leg next time. Don't chase it away with a bike. That's according to the experts. However, that's not the dum of the day. But I do have a dum of the day for you. I do. Best song ever. Now, if I knew who to give this to, if I know any, if any of you are the 7%, make sure you let me know. I'll make sure you get a dunce cap. Um, dunce cap of the month is going to be next week, by the way. Uh, I postponed, it's usually the beginning of the month, but the 4th of July has thrown everything off. Hotair.com endgame. 7% of Americans think chocolate milk comes from brown cows. Now, friends, I drinking a little bit less milk since Fukushima, I think all of you should, because the strontium adheres to it. It doesn't matter what color the cow was. The, and I, and this, is coming, this is going to be like a revelation to people. I guarantee there are people, and they won't admit it, they're listening to me right now going, what? You mean chocolate milk doesn't come from brown cows? Really? Well, the commercial used to say it did, remember? And there, trust me, they're that dumb. To cleanse, that's why if I knew who to send the dunce cap to, this would so win. To cleanse the palate, I'm convinced these are the same people who think fast food fried chicken comes from healthy if you put lettuce and tomato on it. Venezuelans, go to the polls. Uh, I hate when they do that, when they put a link in the middle of your damn article. Strange but true, the number of people who believe chocolate milk comes from brown cows isn't the most disturbing result of the survey. The Invocation Center of the U.S. Dairy conducted survey of more than 1,000 adults, 18 and over. They weren't kids. And in April of this year, they uncovered some shocking facts about how people think about and drink milk. First off, 48% of respondents said that they aren't sure where chocolate milk comes from. Um, guys, it comes from cows and not just the brown kind. So 48% of people did not know that chocolate milk came from from a freaking cow. This is the country that I live in. 
And then people wonder why I'm yelling all the time. Because and I, I look at people and I wonder how damn stupid can you possibly be? I'm sorry, it's not even funny at this point, because I'm surrounded by people like this. And then you get idiots to tell you that you should give a stupid idea the same say as a, as a good idea. Many, many should get their fair say. Not if they're an idiot, they shouldn't get their fair say. I'm sorry. 7% of people, remember, this survey talked to the actual grown-up adults, still think that chocolate milk comes from brown cows. Actually, milk gets its favor from added cocoa beans. They actually had to say it. It said you can dismiss the 7% figure as a function of the margin of error by trolling my respondents, as some people probably found the question so amusing that they answered brown cows just to mess with the pollster. No, that's wishful thinking. Have you heard Drake? Have you heard Beyonce? Have you heard Nickelback? People call that music? That's probably that 7% right here, friends. No, I think we really are that stupid. Anybody that could call Drake music, I'm just saying... What do you do, though? This is 48% of the people that didn't know where chocolate milk comes from. Do they think flavored water comes from naturally occurring raspberry-flavored springs? How do they cope with the mysteries of regular coffee with its strange not-quite-milk, not-quite-black coffee in texture? And what about peanut butter and jelly? How do the peanuts have room to grow with all of that jelly inside the shell? I used to laugh at this song, but now I think these guys are probably above the average sophistication. Uh, and it's, uh, of course, uh, uh, I'm not going to play the song because then I'll, I'll get to it. It's a Hershey Surf song about brown cows, but I can't play it because I'll get flagged and they won't let me uh, put the video up. Friends, thank you for listening to The Correct Views. That's your dum of the day. Please share this video. Make sure other people know I'm out here and please support what I'm doing. That you can do by donating to the correct views of Hotmail.com through PayPal. Thank you for listening, subscribing, sharing, and commenting. Good night, and God bless.